Now, a completely different kind of wide receiver compared to Juju and Jacoby Myers, our last player, DJ Shark. Dynasty League football, February startup ADP, wide receiver 80. He'll also, just like the rest of them, be turning 27 during the season. Average 7.6 half PPR points per game in 2022, which was wide receiver 52. But at the end of the season, after dealing with an injury in the middle, he you know, started to actually put some games together that helped us. Uh, he had at least 90 receiving yards and or a touchdown in four of his last seven games the season um and he's someone I, th- I think he will get a decent contract because of what he can provide to a team with his deep speed being able to stretch defense that is a the type of role that gets paid in the nfl because teams need it we saw it with mvs last year when he got a decent contract it's like this for mvs well yes because he serves an important role for offenses but i'm not sure that that will necessarily translate to fantasy production coop do we have any interest in dj shark I'll tell you right now, dude, you picked a land, like for me, absolute landmine player. If you were looking for hot takes, you picked the right guy. Because I am a oh, let's hear shark. Mega, I'm a big fan, man. A big fan of this player. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if this guy was the highest paid wide receiver this offseason. Because you look around at guys that can play split end, right? That can line up and beat the jam as the, the biggest guy on the field. Um, it's basically DJ Chark and Alan Lazard. And I don't think, I think teams are going to look at Alan Lazard and be like, is this guy a, prod, a product of Aaron Rodgers or is he actually a good player? Right. So DJ Chark, 6'4, with his speed, you know, and I know he had injuries, but this is a guy that could get a Corey Davis type contract where they just look at it and say, hey, you know what? This guy's big enough to block. He's big enough to play every snap on the outside. He's big enough to, he, he's fast enough to beat guys deep. Like, this is the kind of guy that we think we can fix. Like, he, it's like that. You know, that girl where you're like, I can change her, man. I can save her, right? That's DJ Chark to me. Hey, Coop. Yeah. What if I threw the Chargers out there for you? Something that I have heard no one talking about. I want you to – so I don't mean to cut you (laughs) off. I just want you to continue. I want you to touch on that team. The Chargers, if if the Chargers do what people are hinting that they do, which is cut Keenan Allen and and or Gerald Everett for a – you know, for a – for – cap reasons like any tight end that goes there any wide receiver that goes there to be the second target after mike williams could be an absolute game changer just because we we know that joe lombardi was a guy that wanted to uh throw the short passes right show like kept the uh the a dot for justin herbert super low i mean he was the guy with the alvin Kamara offenses he was the guy that threw the ball to like you know uh, Reggie Bush and George Bell like 175 zillion times with the Lions. Like he's gone now, so I think they're going to be able to actually fire the ball around. The thing is, Mike Williams kind of does the same thing as DJ Chark. Having those two guys on the outside would be nightmare situations for for other teams, right? Because you you might have one guy that can cover a fast six three six four guy, but do you have two? Nobody does, right? I guess the Eagles kind of did this year, but that's it. So I don't know. For me, I look at Chark and I'm like, okay. What team has the, the speedy guy, right? What team has the flanker and can use that other guy opposite him to really unlock him? Like, I look at the, I mean, the Lions are kind of a, already a good team for it, right? But, like, what about put him opposite Chris Olave? And now Olave's free to, you know, that, that was kind of what unlocked Garrett Wilson is that you have Corey Davis is this big punching bag, and now he can take a step off the line, go in motion, run all over. Look at Jamar Chase uh, with, T. Higgins on the other side. T. Higgins is the one that has to play split end and tether his foot to the line opposite Hayden Hurst, let Jamar Chase do everything fun, right? Like Adam Thielen's been doing that so that Justin Jefferson can can do those things. Like if I have a guy that I think is insanely talented, I want my team to sign DJ Chark to be that guy on the other side. At the same time, though, I think if with Chark, if he can get that role in the right place, the Bears, for instance, if they really decide they don't like Chase Claypool, I although I like Claypool, why I don't know, we have to get into that today. But, <laughs> uh, I mean, they, they, there's so many spots like the Chiefs, for instance, another one like that's the type of guy where he could play every snap on certain teams, 97 percent of the snaps. So uh, I'm interested. I'm interested. Again, he could just be a guy that's a punching bag or a deep threat and doesn't really actually put up the numbers, but I think he could play a a 90 percent snap share on a lot of these teams. Yeah, he, he's kind of similar to Juju in the way that they had the really good second years in their career and then injuries started to slow them down. But 
DJ Shark still has his athleticism. He can still do something on the field that not as many people can do compared to Juju. Um, depending on landing spot, like he is somebody who could be really interesting, like you were saying. Um, Skylar, do you like the entry point here for Shark? Oh, a- absolutely. I was hoping Coop would disagree with me so we could fight a little <laughs> bit because Shark, I was saying this last off season, like last off season, Shark was a player where I'm like, he's just being absolutely forgotten i mean you're you're getting him for a mid third i i just love that because you say he's a landmine yes but it seems like every other week he's going for 20 or two and that 20 in my three wide receiver two flex lineups is great i really do like it um you know i'm a big fan of these chris godwin type players higher up in my lineup or maybe what we're hoping a guy like Traylon burks can be where they give me that floor you know i i love collecting those guys the michael pittman godwin's in my lineup so i need the dj charks as my final flex to come in and give me those spike weeks and there's gonna be a lot of bidders and you're just hoping again this is a high a high a flying team here i mean you mentioned minnesota you mentioned we mentioned the chargers would be fantastic i mean going back to detroit makes a ton of sense where think what you want of Jamison Williams, but I think, you know, Chark would kind of stick his same role and every other week he was doing damage. Well, I mean, they, at that point, they, they traded away their tight end, right? Like right now they have nobody on the roster. So they were at a minimum rolling three wide receiver sets, right? 11 personnel. You can't like, what are they going to come out and roll Brock Wright and a rookie and two tight end sets? Like it, it doesn't make sense really. So if you have Chark at split end, JMO at flanker and ARSB at slot and just run them every single snap, which is what the, you know, a number of teams have done like the Rams for years now, every 90% of the snaps through wide receivers. Like that's a great fit. I could, and I can give you a landing spot right now that would give people absolute nightmare. Like what would that the be? Fans of this team. Imagine if the New York giants after signing Kenny Galladay to a massive deal on borderline, just speculation come out and they sign another big questionable lions free agent wide receiver to another massive contract and the giants come out and sign dj chark giants fans I feel that giants, makes a lot of sense i would love it i love honest. it as a dj chark fan but as an outsider looking in people like not everybody like you and i scholar have done the, the deep dive on on the upside of dj chark they might be like oh my god here we go again right right kenny galladay yeah, well, you, you don't need him to be an absolute world beater. Like, honestly, the fact that Kenny Galladay was incapable of doing what Isaiah Hodgins came off the, sh- you know, off the practice squad in Buffalo so to sad. do in that team, he was a wide receiver one for the fantasy football playoffs, and so was Richie James. If that doesn't give you so, excitement, if, if DJ Chark goes to the Giants and Wondell Robinson is back early season, there's there's no way you're telling me those two players don't have a little bit of a you know upside play here when you saw what Isaiah Hodgins and Richie James well, did at the end of the year. He's just what, like upgraded uh, Darius Slayton for them, right? Sure. Well, absolutely. As a, as a neutral observer, I love it. As a Giants fan, though, I'm clutching my chest. I'm like, what are we doing? Sure. I mean, this is a guy who might be out there for five games. That's why I did like it to the charge. It's like, hey, let's just hope either Mike Williams or DJ Chark is healthy. If they're both healthy, we're an absolute freaking nightmare. You know, let's say they do use a high draft pick. They get like Jackson Smith and Jigbo, or they just keep Keenan Allen, or they even you know sign a guy who can play there in the in the slot and then they have mike williams on one side dj truck on the other side they missed a lot when guyton was out last year they missed a lot and they didn't have anyone who played that role when mike williams was either out or alongside mike williams on the opposite side when he was healthy so i think that would be a really really interesting spot uh one last little spot i'll throw out there is maybe like a dallas i don't know what their money situation is like but when you have Michael Gallup didn't look quite like himself. Maybe he comes back. He can play a little all over, like you said. But if you have him and CD sliding through the slot, one on the outside, and you have DJ Chark as the third wide receiver on the other side, I think that could be a really fun spot, especially with how much they've historically thrown the ball. Dak Prescott, who is you know a relatively speaking accurate quarterback, uh, I think I think that would about. get people excited. As, as my CV Lamb, my CV Lamb shares. That's exactly what you want is you want that dude where now C Lamb doesn't have to do the dirty work. Now he doesn't have to line up and fist and, and fight Marshawn Lattimore and like be the guy on the outside. Now you have that guy that can do that and then you can move put him wherever you want, like you said, pop him in the slot, do whatever. So I'm on board with it. And people talk about how this free agency class is weak, but you look around the league for the first time in a long like teams do prioritize that split end. And there's so many teams that have it already. Like, that's why a guy like DJ Chark, he's either going to get paid big or he's going to struggle to find a job because it's like, you look at, um, you know, look, look at the AFC North. T. Higgins, big boy, Rashad Bateman, 
they, they just drafted George Pickens for the Steelers. The Browns have Amari Cooper. That that like that division, they don't need that play. And there's a number of divisions that just they already have the split ends lined up, you know. So there's only certain spots where a guy like that fits, but a team might be willing to pay that guy the big bucks to, to do what is a, a dirty work job. Yeah, I guess the main thing I like to do with these wide receivers that are free agents is just look at the range of outcomes here, right? Where would they be valued if they were absolutely buried? Um, you know, and if their point of entry cost is anywhere, if it's it's just that significant, if we're talking a player, you know, is being bought at wide receiver 35, and if he found a landing spot, he would just be absolutely toast. You know, wide receiver 60 plus, it's probably a play I'm completely avoiding, right? With with the first two guys we mentioned kind of as like wide receiver 45 ish, you know, I think there's room either way where you, I don't think you'll pick up a huge amount of value on a Juju or Myers. Like the highest I think these guys can go is like 36 in market and the lowest they'll probably go is like 50 to 60. So 45 seems like a pretty appropriate speculative entry point, but with DJ Chark, wide receiver 80, I mean, it is an absolute toss and this is nothing. This is a flyer. Like if he lands at a spot's nice, he could jump up to wide receiver 40 to 45 where the other two guys are at, which might field you a, a late second if you did want to just flip it. Or it gives you a guy who's in your lineup every single week, gives you that flex upside, and you immediately just jump from wide receiver 80 to wide receiver 40. And if he busts at wide receiver 80, who freaking cares? Why, you know, the third round rookie picks that you have, the early force, whatever, these players bust. 75% of the time. So really I'll take DJ Chark over just about any flyer in that range. This is, this is easily my favorite of these three. Exactly. And you look at and it, really this discussion gets me to the point where I, I'm not going to take Jacoby Myers or Juju in that wide receiver 30 range where we're talking wide receiver three range, because we talked about this, how many situations they could land in where they would be the Tyler Boyd on the team, where you sit there at the goal line and you say, Hey, you know what, Jacoby, we're going to leave the big boys out there. Like we got, we're going jumbo set right now, and it's going to be two tight ends, two wide receivers, and a fullback. And Jacoby's not part of the jumbo set. That's why I'm not going to wide receiver thirty or anywhere in that range. So it's keeping me out of there. Just the possibility that that can happen makes me not interested. Where at least with DJ Chark, if you're going, hey, it's goal line. You're not, you're not turning to the six four wide receiver and saying, hey, you know what, we're, we don't need you for this set. Right? Like there's not many situations. I guess if he landed on like the Dolphins. Then they would be like, hey, you know what? Like, why don't you sit this one out? But I don't, I don't foresee him going somewhere like that. So for me, I think wherever he's going, he's going to be part of the plan. Yeah. And well, I will say to a little preface a little bit if a lot of you guys listening, if you aren't in leagues that play like three wide receivers and two flexes, you know, as deep as we are talking, if you are in a league that's just like two wide receivers and a flex or just three wide receivers, I'm still taking DJ Shark as my favorite, but I do want to roll back our little Juju and Myers love. I'm probably not pursuing these two players at all if you are that shallow, just because of the upside we are talking about. The problem with Tyler Boyd that I've always had especially since C. Higgins was drafted is I'm like, when do I put this guy in my lineup? Like, unless if there's a clear injury, you know, to T or Jamar, when am I putting him in my lineup? I'm not doing it with confidence. If assuming we're not playing basketball, it's just it's hard to predict when the touchdown game is going to come for Tyler Boyd. Um, and you know, maybe you pick a game that has a high over under and you, you, you slide them in there, but you are, you could very easily come out with a four point game and it really stings. So those two players, I value much, much less if we have shadow lineups. I do want to say that I would prefer just the chance at a 25 point game from DJ Chark over, you know, the five point floor of the other players every single day of the week. Or I would just rather have the late second or early third pickup pick up a potential high potential tight end or a backup quarterback that could actually crack, a, a, you know, your lineup in those thinner formats. Exactly. And dynasty is top heavy too. Like the good teams aren't starting guys like that anyway. So, you know, it's you gotta know your format. 